Today, I am giving you the top five iPhone features that every creator should know. I'm a little unorganized, so I do rely on my phone a lot to jot down any ideas I have. The first couple of tips I wanna show you guys relate to organization, so my brain is always pretty scattered. As soon as I have an idea, I need to quickly open my notes and jot down whatever idea I have, because if not, I'm gonna forget it. I also rely on my phone to keep me organized throughout the day to make sure I'm checking off anything I have on my to-do list. The first cool thing I wanna show you guys has to do with the space bar. So let's just say I'm writing a script for a voiceover for a YouTube video. I'm gonna open my notes. Let's just say in the script, I made a mistake in the middle of it and I wanna quickly go and change it. It could be a bit of a hassle sometimes to, to move the cursor around in small text. However, it's not too bad, not too hard. But if you press on the space bar, and press and hold, you can move the cursor. And I feel like it's a little bit easier than the traditional way. It's up to y'all how you wanna use it. But I thought this was a cool feature that you guys should know. The next organizational tip I wanna give you guys has to do with widgets. So me, like I mentioned earlier, I like having a checklist of things that I need to get done in a day. I like how iPhone has a feature where you can have a big widget that takes up almost the entire screen with the list of things that you need to do. And it has a little circle next to it just so you can check it off without having to open the app. For me personally, I I like to use Structured, which is a digital agenda planner, but this widget is also available for the Reminders app, which is a default app that's already included in the Apple Store when you get your iPhone. This list I have right here was just an example. This wasn't actually in my to-do list, but I just wanted to demonstrate how this looks. You literally just press all the dots, all the circles, then it's just scratched off your list and it's just easy. You don't have to open the app for it. And I really like that because you know, I can just unlock my phone, quickly tap the task once I get done. Tip number three for organization involves creating albums and putting them into a specific folder. So this is good for separating your personal photos from your social media content. What we're gonna do is create a folder. You're gonna press the plus sign on the top left hand of the screen. Then you're gonna press new folder. And for this purpose, we're just gonna name it content creation just so i know that's for like my social media stuff right so when you click on your content creation folder you can press edit the plus sign and then you can put new album let's just call this instagram pics okay now i can select what i want to post on instagram so let's say i want to post that i went to krispy kreme and i want to post a picture of me eating a burger and then there, that's my Instagram album within my content creation folder. So I'm gonna press done. I'm gonna go back to my albums. The only downside to this is that you can't put a pre-existing album into a folder that you just created. You're gonna have to create the albums within the folder. So yeah, that sucks. Come on, Apple, come on now. Just let us drag it inside the folder, bro. It'd be so much easier. But anyway, that's a little organizational tool that y'all can use. iPhone feature number four. And this is by far my favorite one. As you might know, I do my own thumbnails for my YouTube videos. And my favorite kind of thumbnail to do is the cutouts pasted on top of backgrounds. I used to have a very lengthy process for creating my thumbnails. Canva does have a feature where you can remove the background, but you know, you gotta, you gotta be paying that premium. I don't pay premium. I'm using the free version, but with this little iPhone feature, it makes things so much easier. And I swear this is my favorite tool by far. So let's say I wanna pick one of these photos, right? All you gotta do is press and hold there. When you see it like pop out like that, that's how you know that it's creating the sticker, right? If you're gonna use Canva within your phone, all you gotta do is click copy, open the Canva app and literally just press and hold. And I'm just gonna press paste. And then bam, the cutout is there perfectly and I did not have to pay for Canva's premium whatever thing. So now I can adjust it, whatever. And now I can add a cute little background. That's gorge, that's gorge, that's beautiful, I love it. <sighs> I used to do, I swear guys, I used to do so many steps just to get, just to be able to do this. Now the last feature that I wanna show you guys has to do with the camera. So I discovered this early on when I got my iPhone 13. iPhone has a feature called HDR, which stands for high dynamic range. And basically it just allows you to see more colors on the videos you take. However, this could backfire depending on the lighting and what you're trying to achieve when you're making your content. So for example, I'm gonna just see if I can demonstrate the difference real quick. I've noticed that HDR video can make the colors look off. As you can see, this reel makes me look really orange and my boyfriend look really pink. 
Also, HDR videos tend to look really bright. You may have noticed this on some videos in your Instagram Reels page. There also tends to be this unflattering gray shadow on the face and the highlights of the face to look too bright. When I imported HDR video into my video editing software, the colors desaturate. HDR video tends to look different depending on where you're seeing it and how you're seeing it. You'll see how HDR truly looks if battery saver mode is turned off and you're not currently screen recording. I prefer to record in non-HDR because the colors and brightness tend to be more even. I strongly suggest for you all to film videos on your iPhone using the HDR mode and the non-HDR mode to truly see the difference. You guys decide whether you like the HDR feature. I personally don't. That's why I just decided I'm gonna turn off HDR. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to turn it off. You're gonna go to your settings. Then you're gonna scroll to camera. You're gonna click record video. And then you're gonna turn off HDR video. And that's it. And then you won't have that problem with the off looking colors. The bad thing about filming in HDR is that once you film in HDR, you can't revert it to like the normal settings. All right guys, that's gonna be the end of the five iPhone features that every creator should know. I hope you guys learned something and if there's anything that I miss, go ahead and drop it below in the comments and let's help each other out so that we can create better and high quality content. Subscribe if you like this video, check out my other videos, leave a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!